Hi, so today's video is brought to you by one of my MMF bisexual romances called Before He Was Famous. And the reason for me making this the sponsored book today will become obvious in a second. Until then, I have some very exciting things to share with you. I've been working on this for a while. It is what I am calling the five stages of bisexuality. So let's just get into it. Stage one of this uh, thing that I have created is Realization. Realization happened for me uh, the first few weeks of freshman year of college. And I'll give you a little background. Um, when I was nine years old, I saw this particular girl for the first time and instantly just fell for her. And I had feelings for her from age nine to age 14 straight, solid. Um, however, I went through puberty in the middle of that and after puberty, I started noticing that I had sexual fantasies about boys. And as time went on, they got stronger and stronger. So when I was in high school, part of my thinking was, this was before the internet, um, part of my thinking was that uh, you start out l liking, if you're gay, you start out liking girls, then slowly you start liking boys more and more until finally you end up being gay. Like that, that went through my mind. I hoped it wasn't true, but it did. Even though I, at the same time I was still having crushes on girls, I thought this could be the way it works. And then when I got into the freshman year of college, I met this boy really early on, and I, I had strong feelings for him fast. In fact, the reason why I made this book, uh, the sponsored book of this video, is because I chronicle what happened between me and that boy in this book. So all the things that happens in college, uh, for these two, for this couple, is actually the things that happened with me and this other guy. But I fell for him really quickly and really hard. And then someone else, I also had a crush on another guy. So at that point, after two, three weeks, I remember laying in bed one night with the lights off, thinking, "Oh my God, you know what? I, I generally think I'm gay. I'm gay. Okay, I'm gay." And I just accepted the fact that I was gay. That lasted for five minutes. Literally, 10 minutes later, I was like, yeah, no, I'm not gay. <laughs> no, I can't imagine my life without a girl in it. So there's no way possible that I am gay. I must be bisexual. And that was my realization moment. Stage one. Stage two, doubt. Now, there's a couple of ways that doubt can express itself. The way it expressed itself for me was... The first time after that, I developed strong feelings for someone, it being a girl. And all of my thoughts about boys vanished. Why? Because all I could see was this person who I had this huge crush on and, and feelings for everyone else was just pushed away. This is when doubt happens, and this is how doubt might happen with you. There's another way it could happen, which is, let me ask you this. If you identify as a, as a label outside of bisexuality, let's say pansexual, or let's say heteroflexual, or omnisexual, or any of those other things, do you truly believe that pansexual is different than bisexual? If you say yes, that is something different about that than, bisexual, than pansexual, you say these are two separate different things and you are not bisexual, you are pansexual, and guess what? You are currently going through the stage of doubt. Why you are doubting, it's up to you. It's like it's an individual thing. But if you are thinking those thoughts, or if you are in a relationship with someone, even though you might have had feelings for multiple genders before you got in that relationship, and now you don't see yourself ever feeling anything other than for this person or this gender ever again, you are in the stage of doubt. But there's no way to get to stage three without first going through doubt. Even so even if you haven't gone through doubt and you stepped into stage three, know that you haven't really progressed because you can't until you go through doubt. Stage three is a stage I'm calling validation. And it sounds like, you know, just people telling you you're good enough, you're smart enough, and people like you. That's not what it is. And the reason why you have to go through doubt is you have to be able to fully get and understand that you are bisexual. So the term bisexual, when everyone is referring to it with all the connotations and all that stuff, is referring to you. You have to kind of accept it and be a part of it and understand it. 
And only then, once you have embraced the idea that you are that thing, can you then go out and feel the validation from other things. And, you know, you can get validation from multiple sources. For example, you could be getting validation from all of my videos, which, and you can be getting validation from like social media, like a Facebook group like uh, Binet USA or a group like um, Global Bisexual Network or anything like that, or Reddit's group. You might be getting validation from that, but that's like, that's like three, stage three A. Real validation occurs when you go out into the real world and you meet other bisexuals and you are able to look in their eyes, watch them, see who they are, and then truly understand that what you are as bisexual is okay, it's good, it's fine, it's powerful, it's positive, it's all these things. You will never ever be able to validate who you are until you actually meet other people who are bisexual. And then once you truly understand, once you truly get it, and you'll know it when you feel it, once you truly get that being bisexual is okay, then you can move on to stage four. Stage four, embracing. Embracing your bisexuality. And the way you do this is in multiple ways. You know, part of embracing is yes, telling your family that you're bisexual or telling your friends you're bisexual. But it goes way past that. It's about, you know, being able to mention your bisexual at work or on, in social situations, in situations where it might feel dangerous or it might seem like there's some sort of negative con consequences for it. Just embracing who you are and the effect that it has on the world and the way the world affects you. Truly embracing it, no matter what the consequences is, is stage four. And then once you have truly embraced it and you've worked through the positives and the negatives that have happened in your life because you've done it, you can go to stage five. That stage I'm calling Zen. Because that is when the fact that you are bisexual fades away. The analogy I'll use is, I've mentioned before, I'm from a country called the Bahamas. When I first moved to Los Angeles, I brought up that fact within the first like eight sentences of basically anyone I've met. Why? Because every time I mentioned I was bisexual, they would go, oh my God, that's so cool. And just like that, they would think of me positively. So it was always there, it was always playing in my mind, and I would constantly think about how I could work it into a sentence, if not just automatically doing it. But it was there. It was present in my mind. In recent years, I've realized that I don't know who knows I'm from the Bahamas and who doesn't know I'm from the Bahamas because it, it has no bearing on my thought process at all. I don't think about the positive things that people think about it. I don't think about the negative things people think about it. And yes, there are negative things. For example, we just had an election in the United States and it's been proven that, you know, there's a certain group of people that don't like foreigners and the bomb is a foreign country. So there's a lot of people who don't like it. A lot of people do like it, but it doesn't come into my play, my mental thinking at all. That's a state of Zen. So Zen in bisexuality would be when your bisexuality plays no bearing on your life at all. You don't know who knows, you don't know who doesn't know. You know, when a conversation comes up where it's relevant, you just mention it, and you don't think about the consequences for you saying it or not saying it and stuff like that. When all that is gone, then you have entered the fifth stage of bisexuality, which is the state of Zen. And those are my five stages of bisexuality. What stage are you on? I am personally on stage four. I know it's gonna be very hard for me to go from stage four to stage five because I do these videos, I write these books. Um, they're all kind of revolving around bisexuality. So it's just, it's constantly there. So how do I manage to forget it when it's just constantly in my face every day? But you know, we live and then eventually maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't get to stage five. And it's perfectly okay. Some people never get to stage one. Some people never pass stage one or enter stage two or age three. It's all okay. It's no requirement. These are just observations of what it is to be bisexual from someone who's in a very unique position in the bisexual world. 
So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also, please check out Before He Was Famous. It's a very, um, let's call it sexy book. And like I said, I've based the relationship on the two characters on, um, on mine with the guy I had a huge crush on in college. Huge crush. Anyway, uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I do many videos on bisexual topic, but I don't film on a regular basis. So when you want to know when a new video comes out, you have to click on that little bell next to the subscription button, and that will let you know when a new video is coming out. Until the next video, stay cooler, my bisexual friend. Stay cooler. And uh, check out Before He Was Famous. <laughs> Bye.